there are three things you need for the simulation software. The first one is the current version or latest version of WPI library. This is of course giving you the foundational functions, variables, and commands needed to ultimately control the robot. And it provides some of the functions needed for the simulation software. So head on over to the uh, FRC documentation, go on to the WPI lib installation guide, and download the latest release of WPI lib. Of course, the, there are instructions down below that tells you how to extract it depending on what uh, computer you're using. In this case, I am using the uh, Windows. And go on over to the um, WPI lib folder, uh, open it up, op open it. It'll come up, WPI lib installer, and install it uh, appropriately. So there you go, WPI lib has successfully installed. If I finish the exit, there we go. It should have popped up somewhere. Um, second thing that you need to install is the Mechanical Advantage Advantage Scope. This is the simulation software needed to actually simulate the robot in the 2D slash 3D in, in a virtual field. So in this, you'd go on over to the GitHub Mechanical Advantage Advantage Scope uh, repository, and you go into the releases page. You do not download the code directly. You have to go to the releases page where it shows you the common downloads to uh, for the software. In this case, I am doing Windows. There you go, it is installing. And there we go, Advantage Scope is right here. So let me just see, there we go. Uh, I'll show you how to operate this in just a second, but right now we actually need the code to simulate it. So now your final thing to download is the Advantage Kit. This is the object that allows you to log all the files and allows you to actually simulate the certain subsystems and things needed to do um, the in, within the actual virtual environment. So of course, you're gonna go back to Mechanical Advantage and in, instead of Advantage Scope, you're going to be installing Advantage Kit. So now head over here. There's no need to go to, actually let me see, releases. You're gonna go over here, yes. You are you are gonna head to the releases page. You're gonna go to version three uh, or whatever the latest version is. Go down here to the uh, advantage kit underscore advantage swerve drive project dot zip. Click on it. It is going to open up. Okay, so now that we got VS Code up here and running, this is the 2024 version. Make sure that it's running the 2024 WPI Lib VS Code version and not the 2023 or whatever the previous year was. Open up the folder or clone the, uh, clone the repository appropriately. Go down to SRC Java Constants. So now that we have the Advantage Kit Advantage Swerve Drive project, please head on over to the constant uh, file within the src slash main, java slash src slash robot, and within the constants.java folder, and not folder, file, and go and change this one simple variable from real to sim. There we go. Now that we have that going, uh, you can also see at the bottom here that it's installing all of the necessary uh, Gradle uh, dependencies. If that is not happening to you, there is a um, a link within the description that will sh that's going to have all of the dependent uh, libraries that are needed to in be installed um, through that. In order to do that, you just click on here. You click on you type in install. Um, or let's see, not install, libraries, manage vendor libraries, install new libraries online, and do that appropriately. 
If you click on here, you can drop the ven vendor file URL. But you can see here that it's already configuring and um, figuring out how to do that. Give it a minute. Uh, while it is taking a little while to um, configure, this is only going to be the first. This is only going to happen probably for the first time because it needs to install everything online. There are two main issues that we ran into when we were uh, first doing this. The first issue was, of course, internet access. You have to have to have to make sure that you are connected to a solid network, um, or else it won't be able to install any of the Gradle dependencies online automatically. Um, and if it fails for the first time, um, on some computers you had to do the um, install vendor libraries online feature uh, by yourself manually. Um, and the second thing is storage space. When I did this on my laptop, I kept on getting an error when I was installing almost anything. But when I finally figured out that I only had like one gigabyte of storage, that was the main issue. And it's gonna, and these things will install more and more dependencies and content and other things like that as um, we continue to set this up. So please make sure that you have sufficient storage space when uh, when I got this all working, it was around, I would like to say, 20 gigs of uh, free space before I was actually able to run all the simulation software appropriately. So maybe have it around there or maybe more, depending on um, uh, how much storage space you have and how much you're going to be installing all this. So there you go, you have a successful build of the code. Just to make sure I'm gonna build it once more, especially with the one change that I have. Build robot code, uh, whatever, doesn't matter. There you go, build successful. Now that we have a um, successful build of the 2024 WPI lib within the Advantage Kit Advanced Web Drive project, um, it's time to now implement this into the simulation software. So when you uh, installed Advantage Scope, it probably already launched for you as it did for me. Uh, but if not, you gotta find its uh, location on where it got installed, open up the .exe or whatever launch file you have um, and find the app. Now that you have the app, you have the VS code, you have the uh, Advantage Kit, it's time to connect it all together. So first go over here, uh, open this up and type in simulate robot code. We are going to be doing this as a Java simulation. Sure, I'll let the save one. 1218. Uh, let's see, this is an error occurred. Okay. Let me try this again. Simulate robot code, Java. Okay, <laughs> Okay. That, that's all right. Of course, this is a bit finicky. This is, um, this isn't like a fully, uh, foolproof uh, code here. So when you are given the option, we're gonna be doing the sim GUI option, not the real driver station. Um, that is another option that we could do for simulation software, but for right now, we're just gonna be using that. Uh, continue, yes. Low access, well, there we go. Whoa, no, what happened? And I think we're okay. So now you have the robot simulation, you have the advantage scope simulator, connect the two together and, and let's, uh, and that should get everything working. So let's head on over advantage scope file. We are connect to simulator. 
there we go. So now this, is, now this should have successfully simulated to the robot simulation software. Head on over to the plus sign here and you're given a buttload of options. For right now, we're just gonna do the odometry as this is showing the current field. Um, when I first did this on my laptop, it was showing an empty field. If that is the case, the one issue that I came up, that, that I came up against was uh, not enough storage space. Um, if you go up, up here to, let's see, help. Oh, here you know, show as a download status. There we go, all assets downloaded, we'll check updates at whatever time, it doesn't matter. If that is showing it, then you have everything downloaded. If it's not, and there's an error, you need more storage space. So now going to the odometry, you have the field, you have everything right here. I am going to set the origin to the center. And now advantage kit, opening this folder, we are going to go to real outputs. We are going to go to odometry. And we have robot, and this robot here has a, a, po a pose a 2D. So we're gonna drag this into this box here. Bam. So you can sort of see now that there is a red square right here. And one awesome thing that you could do, going back down here to the robot simulation, um, it now needs, we now need to connect everything up. Um, let me just set this situated properly. So system joysticks, you can sort of see the keyboards right here. Um, this is the WASD and you can see this joystick here. Let me shorten this out, shorten this out and assign keyboard zero onto joystick. Um, no need for one and two. Those are, those aren't WASD. Everything is right here properly. So if I hit, yep, W, S, A, D, you can see the axes change as I press the buttons. So that is working appropriately. And now you can still see that the robot is not moving. Um, apparently you also need to go over here and in the DS option, I don't know what that means. You can go over here and you have to click keyboard zero settings since we are using keyboard zero. And at the right here, you can sort of see the count of the number of axes that we have. I believe we are, we need five. Go to axis four. And this, this axis right here is controlling the turn. Uh, the turn of the robot. We have WASD to move it forward, backwards, left, right. We don't have the ability to turn it yet. Axis four here within the DS settings uh, will allow us to, to do that. So axis four, increase. I'm just gonna make this Q and E right now. Q and E. And there we go. If I shorten this, get this out of here. Now, finally, this should work change the robot status from disabled to teleoperated. And now if I hit W, there we go. You can sort of see the square moving around in there as much as you want. And if I press Q and E, it turns. Hooray, we got it to work. To be honest, I was kind of worried that it was gonna break and I would have to problem solve there. But you can sort of see there, everything is going according to plan. If I go back to the advantage scope and do WASD, it doesn't work. Your uh, computer has to be on the robot simulation for the um, thing to run properly. Um, I'm just gonna move this over here for now. I'm gonna open this up. Another cool thing that you can do is instead of just odometry, you can go 3D field and you can actually see the entire field from a 3D perspective. And if I, um, and if I now drop the robot 2D position within here, there's our robot. If I drive it, there it goes. Going across the field and everything. And this is awesome because you can insert joysticks, you can insert other buttons. Um, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, one cool thing that I found out yesterday that is, um, pretty neat. Um, can I, let's see, 
Uh, let's see, settings. Show preferences. Here we go. 3D mode. We're gonna make it cinematic. There we go. That's that's better. And previously, I was able to change the perspective of the robot. Let me see if I can figure that out on Windows. But what you could do is that you could just like right click on the field and change uh, how the camera is angled. It doesn't seem to work that on Windows. But there we go. We have the robot within the 3D field that we can control using WSD and Q&E to turn.